Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, June 18th, and um, everybody was having technical difficulties this morning. So we've all been having a text going around about how to um, fix all of the, oh, look, there's Tracy. Um, oh, and Sue, yay. Um, so everybody's have Debbie and Elizabeth and uh, I have, and Michelle have had texts going around about who's having technical difficulties and who's not. And um, I am the one not, so that is why I am on this morning. It's supposed to be Michelle's morning, but it's all good. And um, We'll just see what God's doing this morning because everything is as it should be. As um, oh, oh, Debbie, you're so funny. Um, everything is as it should be, as Elizabeth says. And I just wish when I say that that I could um project the picture in my mind when I say that because I picture Elizabeth saying it as the fairy godmother in Cinderella when she comes to rescue her and gives her her gown and changes the pumpkin into a carriage and, and the mice and the horses and all of that kind of stuff. So every time Elizabeth says that, that's what I think because um, I'm a little weird, uh, but weird is good. Uh, so today is Saturday, June 18th. This is Elizabeth Sharonown's daily Bible study. And uh, I am Lori, for those of you who don't know. And please, please put your uh, prayer requests and your praise reports in the comments so that um, we can <laughs> so, so that we can uh, make sure we get you in the prayer journal and we can pray with you and uh, be in agreement. So, um, I'm excited about today's reading. So good. I wanted to start off with um, devotion. Um, my devotion this morning is in Jesus Calling. And, um, you know, I haven't read Jesus Calling in a few years, but um, I think it was last month. I felt impressed to uh, pick it up and it was perfect. And so I've been checking in on it periodically. <laughs> So today's reading I wanted to share with you guys, it says, you are my beloved child. I chose you before the foundation of the world to walk with me along paths designed uniquely for you. Concentrate on keeping in step with me instead of trying to anticipate my plans for you. If you trust that my plans are to prosper you and not to harm you, you can relax and enjoy the present moment. Your hope and your future are rooted in heaven where eternal ecstasy awaits you. Nothing can rob you of your inheritance of unimaginable riches and well-being. Sometimes I grant you glimpse, glimpses of your glorious future to encourage you and spur you on, but your main focus should be staying close to me. I set the pace in keeping with your needs and my purposes. Okay, y'all. Oh, look. Oh, sweet Tony is watching. Yeah. Um, I thought this devotional was so good. It speaks to me on so many different levels. Number one, first of all, I want to remind everybody that God, you are God's beloved child. He chose you before the foundation of the world to walk with him. And that our paths are designed uniquely for us, uniquely for you. He, um, he did not make my path and say, I'm going to stick Debbie in that path. Um, 
because Debbie would not fit in that path because I have some crooked lines and she has straight lines. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but my path is not your path. Your path is not my path. We all have a unique path with unique experiences with God. Um, so, and the other thing that um, I didn't notice the first couple of times I read this is it says, I set the pace in keeping your needs and my, in keeping with your needs and my purposes. You know, with my training for this 5K, um, it has been, I'm sorry, you know, I have a mosquito bite on my leg and it itches. Um, I love Gary Nolan. Um, it itches and so I keep scratching it. So I apologize for, for that. Um, in this training for this 5K run, I, um, God is so good, y'all. He's so good. In this journey, I have um, learned so much and I didn't realize till I was talking with um, uh, one of our uh, ladies on a dear friend of mine, uh, Wendy Bates. I was talking with her last night and she asked when this run is, and I didn't realize it's like in a couple of weeks and it freaked me out just a little bit. Um, but you know, it's all good. Everything is as it should be. And I always want to go boopity boppity boop. But um, the pace, um, keeping, he sets the pace in keeping with my needs and his purposes. Um, you know, if we, if we try to run the race um, outside of his strength and in our strength, first of all, we're not going to go very far. Second of all, um, it's hard. It is miserable. And um, we may not be on the right pace. I mean, just because we think we need to go faster doesn't mean that we're supposed to, um, because maybe that's not his purpose. So I thought today's devotion was great. So let's start with, we're in 1 Kings, we're talking about Ezekiel, uh, not Ezekiel, goodness, Ezekiel is one of my favorite prophets too, but we're talking about Elijah, and um, in this little running journey that God has had me on, um, he's had me um, look to Elijah quite a bit, um, so it's pretty um Elijah entertained me today. His, the reading about Elijah really entertained me today um, because here we are. I mean, there are a few things about um, Elijah. He is in the midst of this huge drought, the famine, which um, he is the prophet who spoke the word that there would not be any rain until he said there was going to be rain. So he is partly in this situation because of his because of the words he spoke, his obedience to God. I mean, I don't want to say anything's out of God or anything like that, um, but um, he's in the drought um, because he spoke the words. Good morning, Jana. Good morning, Eileen. Um, so he's in the drought because. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, yesterday he um, came back and he called water down from heaven there's going to be a big rain he had this big competition i don't want to say competition he had this big uh, showing where he was so confident in his in god um god was going to show up the the false prophets god baal and all them he was not going to show up because he's not real and um so he i mean he didn't waver he didn't have a doubt at all yesterday we're reading and then at the end of that at the end of all that big show um god gives him supernatural strength and he runs ahead of the eagle king ahab and he's to the gate before ahab gets there um i mean he's just been in this like supernatural bubble with God and so now he's Ahab has gotten there and he sees his wife Jezebel and he says Elijah this is what Elijah did and Jezebel gets angry like Jezebel does and says 
um, to Elijah that um, may the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just like you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. I mean, he was afraid. He just got like literally transported ahead of King Ahab and was in this miraculous bubble with the power of God, so to speak. And now he's afraid because Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. Um, may the God strike me even after he just proved that the gods that she's talking about and serves um are not real that his god's bigger even after that he's afraid and he runs for his life and he goes to be alone um and he sleeps under the tree and um and he sat down in solidarity solid solitary uh under the broom tree and prayed that he might die I have had enough, Lord, he says. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he laid down and he slept. Oh, and then the angel touches him and tells him to, okay, first of all, I want to say, how many times do we have these supernatural experiences? I mean, I know I used to do it a lot. Um, we have these supernatural experiences with God and everything's wonderful. And we're just like in the honeymoon phase, everything's wonderful, nothing can go wrong. God's so good. He's done so many wonderful things to me. And um, all of the sudden, uh, your air conditioning goes out um, and you don't have the finances to get new air conditioning or your car breaks down and you can't fix it, or your child is acting like a crazy person and you don't know how to fix that. And it's just like, God, I have had enough. It shouldn't be this way. Um, you know, I've been serving you. I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. Why are these things happening? I mean, how many times have we done that? I've done that so many times. Um, so he's asleep. And the angel touches him and then um, he gets up and the angel touches him twice. He gets up and I, um, I had never noticed that when he ate and drank the second time, um, he gave him strength for 40 days and 40 nights to travel to Mount, Mount Sinai. Um, oh, that's good, Debbie. That's really good. Um, so Elijah is, um, <clears throat> he's like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. Um, I've had enough. And he, um, I mean, gosh, I'm just amazed by all of the, the encounters with God and how God trusted him to do um Oh, it was Shabbat Shalom. I hope I said that right, Rita. Um, trusted him with the um, things that, that happened, with the things that Elijah did, the display of God's glory and God's power that Elijah got to um, display. Um, but Elijah didn't get to do that because... He, um, the thing that God had spoke to me recently about Elijah is, you know, I, um, Debbie said that Elijah faced a lot of giants, but the one that, got, that devastated him was the giant of fatigue, um, which I think is so good in this, um, little running journey. And I know y'all are probably so sick of me talking about this, but it's just where God has me right now. Um. I um, hit kind of like a wall um, where it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. It's hard. I just, it doesn't look like I thought it was going to look. 
Um, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it good enough. I'm going to come in last. Um, and it's just hard. Um, but, you know, God led Elijah through all of these periods in his life, but Elijah had the responsibility to move, he had to move for the provision. He had to move, um, he had to go to the creek to be able to get the water and the ravens to feed him. He had to go there where God told him to go, even though it may have been hard um, and the food may have not been what he wanted, may have not been what he was used to. Um, he wasn't as comfortable as he probably was in other places. So, but that provision in that season ran out. So God told him to move again. And so he had to go back into town and see the widow. And he had to be obedient in order to receive the next provision that God had for him. And then he, um, after that, you know, he had to move again and he had to speak out. He had to keep going regardless of what it looked like. Um, and, you know, God has spoken so much to me about that through Elijah um, that, you know, will I, if I know that this is something that I'm supposed to do, whether it's training for the 5K or whether it's just my walk with Christ or maybe it's tithing or uh, reading the daily Bible, will I continue to do it if the outcome doesn't look like how I thought it should? Will I continue if it's not feeling like I think it's supposed to? Will I continue if I'm not getting the results I think I should? Um, you know, I stepped on the scale. Now, I haven't stepped on the scale many, many, many months. I mean, God delivered me from that. But every once when I, I'll think, mm, I wonder. Let me check my obedience by what the number on the scale says, which is so silly. Um, and I'll hop on the scale and it's still the same. And as a matter of fact, I did that last week and it was the exact same. It was when I first started training for this 5k and I've done it periodically throughout. And God tells me the exact same thing every time. Um, he said, but he added to it this last time. He always says um, that was not the purpose of the journey was to change the number on the scale. The purpose of the journey was to learn how to walk with him and rely on him. Um, and so this time he spoke to me, that was not the purpose of the journey, but he says, will you continue the journey even if the number doesn't change. So, you know, Elijah, even though the provision wasn't what he thought it should be, even though he had to keep moving, he can, even though he didn't like, even though that he's scared, even, you know, even though that he is in the midst of this drought because he spoke there will not be rain until he says, he kept pursuing God. So, if my kids are not behaving the way I think, I love you, Sherry, you're the cutest thing. Um, even though I completely lost my train of thought, um, even though he's in the middle of this drought because he said there wasn't gonna be rain and then comes rain, um, you know, he conti continues to pursue God because even if my kids aren't acting right, even if it doesn't look like my kid is, um, or my grandkids are going to make it, um, or they're never going to be, they're never going to come out of addiction or, um, they're never going to start serving God or whatever, even though, the results are not like I think they should be. 
will I continue to pursue God, even though my my preferences aren't met, my um, wants, not my needs, my wants are not met, um, will I continue to walk with him and learn how to abide in him and learn how to rest in him and how to let him be the strength in the midst of my weakness, because that is when we see the glory of the of God. That is when we accomplish the great things that he has for us, when we can learn to be weak in the midst and let his strength guide us and carry us. So my two cents on that, y'all. Um, and I love that Elijah is, is uh, having this discussion uh, with God about, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but people of Israel have broken their covenants with you, torn down your altars and killed everyone in your prophets. I'm the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me, except I don't really think that it's the Israelites who are trying to kill him. It's Jezebel. Um, so, you know, when we get in the, um, when we get in the pity party that Elijah is having, we tend to think, as I always say to my grandson, when he is, he was like, you never let me do this. I never get to do that. And so we tend to think that it's always going to be this way. It's always, um, I'm never going to get ahead. I'm never going to fulfill the purposes that God has for me. I'm never going to do whatever, but what if in the midst of feeling, I'm never, I am actually fulfilling the purposes that God has for me? What if in the midst of getting ready to pull my hair out because I, I don't know how to get through to my grandson, I am right in the middle of the perfect purpose of God for my life because I am, because I am. And the purpose is to learn to know him more, to love him more, to let him love me more, to show his love to other people more. I mean, right in the midst of jogging and thinking I'm going to throw up because I can't move my legs another step or I can't do it. I can't do it how I think um, the vision in my mind is um, right in the midst of that, I am completely in the perfect purpose of God because in the very moment, I am so aware of my weakness that I can't take another step or that I can't get another breath or that I can't do this perfect vision that I have for myself, which is completely unattainable. In that very moment, I can choose to keep trying to white knuckle it, or I can say, God, you are the very breath that I breathe. You are the very breath that I breathe to get me further. You are the very one who gives me the strength to take another step. So in that very moment, I am in the perfect purpose of God and perfection is all around me because he is there. So, you know, Elizabeth and I have been talking to that about that very issue and I have been praying and not till this very moment, Elizabeth, did I get the revelation. So, Anywho, so that's Elijah. And so Elijah, um, you know, he's going to hang it up. He's going to hang it up. He's done. He's going to hang it up. And God tells him to go find Elisha, which is pretty, I mean, how, I don't know. I was listening to a, <laughs> a, a preacher talk about this this passage about um, Elijah 
uh, taking his cloak and, and throwing it over Elisha. And he had said, how gangster is that? I mean, how bold is that to just go, here you go, you can have it all. Just throw it over and you can have it all. Some kids just in the, in the field plowing and here you go, your life's getting ready to change. I mean, he's out there plowing. And God changes like God is a suddenly God. He's a suddenly God, y'all. Um, and then we go to Acts. Ooh, Acts is so amazing. Um, and Peter. And for some reason, when I have read Acts in the years before, I um, didn't really notice. It didn't really jump out at me. Um, the, uh, the deaths that the apostles are facing um it's just i don't know if i skipped over it or whatever but um i didn't really notice it so much until this year when it was happening um when we were reading it you know at the point we're reading it oh that happened and then this happened um i hadn't really noticed that um but we have king herod agrippa and he's persecuting believers he had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. Stephen has just been stoned, you know, just a few days ago uh, in a reading. And now he um, is arresting Peter. Peter's in jail. Um, he is, Peter is in jail. Um, I'm going to try to do math, y'all, which I'm not saying it will be good, but Peter's in jail. He is guarded by 12 guards, which I think is. Um, significant 12 tribes of Israel 12 guards um and he's fastened they are um the guards are guarding him there's like two guards here two guards there two guards um <clears throat> so and he's in jail and uh, he's chained and he's got these guards sitting on the side and he's just asleep, just asleep, just at complete peace, um, knowing that, you know, or thinking, because at this point he doesn't, it doesn't say whether Peter knows that God's going to um, uh, get him out of jail or what, he doesn't know. So he's just chilling. And the angel comes and Peter thinks he's dreaming. Um, he thinks it's just a vision that he's seeing. And, you know, God sets him free completely out of our, out of his, um, his change. And one point I'd like to say is how many times when we are, um, <laughs> when we're walking through our lives and um, we may be at complete peace in our chains, um, thinking it'll be okay. Um, thinking I can deal with this, you know, just loving God and walking through life with our chains. Um, when all of a sudden we're set free and we think, well, this can't possibly be that I'm set free. Um, but then it says, Peter came to his senses, he came to his senses. Um, and he was like, oh, this is for real. This is really happening. And so he immediately goes to the house, which I think is so funny. Um, he goes to the house when he realized it and he came to his senses, he, um, he says, oh, this is really true. He said, the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from the Jewish leaders from what they had planned for me to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, mother of John Mark, where many were gathered in prayer. And he knocked on the door in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone 
Peter is standing at the door. Okay, first of all, um, you know, God, there's nothing in the Bible, my mistake. It's the only time we hear of Rhoda. Because Rhoda didn't question who was at the door. Um, Rhoda just knew it was Peter and just was like amazed beside herself. Just, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's Peter. So excited. And she goes, she tells everybody who has been praying fervently for his release, his rescue. God intervene. I mean, that's this is what they're praying for. And she goes back and tell them, and they're like, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. How many times do we do that when we, we say prayers and um, we say prayers and we believe for things? And then, you know, maybe the doctor calls and says, well, the report's negative. It was positive, but now it's negative. We can't find any trace of that cancer or um, we can't find any trace of, you know, high cholesterol or blood pressure or diabetes or all these things that could have been causing any problems. You've been praying for that. Um, and you're just like, I, okay, great. Thank you. And, but we're just not sure. I mean, God, help our unbelief. Help our unbelief. So Peter um, continues knocking and they finally go to the door and they're amazed. They're amazed. Sometimes it just takes a little while for the, for the, for the purpose and the miracles of God to send in. I mean, miracles and God's power should be the norm. It should be what we expect. I mean, we should be amazed by it because his power is always amazing, but we should always expect his miracles and his provision. We should expect that Peter's going to get released. We should expect that the people that we're praying for are, um, are going to get set free. We should expect that our kids are going to come out of addiction. We should expect that our kids are going to serve God because that's what the word of God says. His promises are yes and amen. They're not yes and maybe amen. They are yes and amen. Because he is not a man that he would lie. Oh, good stuff. Our God is such a good God. Oh, such a good, good God. And then, you know, at dawn, the soldiers wake up and there's this huge commotion. What happened? Where is he? He interrogated the guards. I feel bad for the guards because they didn't do anything. God just put them to sleep. I feel bad for them. And they're sentenced to death. So Herod's ticked. Um, and then um, I thought, you know, Herod gives this big speech. He puts on his big robe. The people give him a great ovation shouting, it's the voice of God, not a man. Well, first of all, the people are delusional. Um, but Instantly, the angel of the Lord struck Herod with sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving the glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and died. Ugh, what a horrible death. I mean, but the consequences of serving people rather than God. Serving people rather than God worshiping people rather than God, accepting their praise and not giving God the glory. Um, you know, but we were uh, in my office for work. Um, we were discussing the election uh, that is coming up and we were talking um, about corruption and politics and all that kind of stuff. And during the debate for the attorney general, one of the uh, candidates had said, you know, absolute power absolutely cor corrupts and absolute power absolutely corrupts. You know, if we um, ever begin to think that we, we become so prideful to think that we can do these things of our own and not realize that it is God doing them for us 
for through us. It is not his breath that I breathe. It is not his strength that keeps me going, that keeps my feet moving forward. If we ever begin to become so prideful to think we do that on our own, you know, we're going to be so consumed with pride and fall. And it's going to be a hard fall. Um, so that's that. And then Psalms 136, um, I can't remember, and I didn't have time. I meant to look last night, but um, I was working late and I was reading this. So um, just in case I needed to do this morning. So I wanted to have a clue before the first thing this morning. And then this morning when we were all trying to figure out what was going on, I didn't have time to uh, look, but this Psalm is called a certain kind of thing. If you know, please put it in the chat. Um, but they do it in several churches, you know, where the priest will read, give thanks to the homily. I think it's a homily, maybe. Um, and if it's not, please forgive me because, um, well, because I don't know everything. And I think that's what it is, but I could be wrong and confused. But then, and then the congregation repeats, his faithful love endures forever. Um, so I meant to study about that and I'm going to do that today. I'll be on tomorrow. Maybe I'll have an answer for you guys. Um, you know, but his faithful love endures forever. Y'all it is unending. It is unmeasurable. It is all consuming. It is. Oh, it is the very thing, the very thing, the very thing that causes us to live his love his faithful love not just his love his faithful love endures forever oh such a good god such a good good god and then proverbs and i'm running over debbie i'm eight minutes over um starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate so stop before dispute breaks out Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to the Lord. You know, and um, so true. And how many times is it hard to sometimes in the midst of uh, feeling offended and maybe you're bitter because of some past hurt or resentful or maybe because you don't like to deal with things when they come up. You'd rather just kind of step them down. So then one day somebody's smacking gum and it's the straw that broke the camel's back and there is going to be a dispute. And everything that you think um, that you're upset about is going to cause this big quarrel, you're going to start it. So um, it's best to address issues before they become a quarrel in the dispute. Um, but that's all I know today, which all I know is that God's faithful love endures forever. He is a great and mighty God who has specific, unique purposes and paths for us. And when we are loving him, seeking him, reading his words, we are perfectly in the middle of those purposes and plans because his faithful love endures forever and he guides us everywhere we go. So I want to thank you all for joining me and I will see you guys again tomorrow morning. Please try to stay cool today. Enjoy the weekend with your family and um, I love you guys. Be blessed. You are highly favored. You are chosen and God's just amazing. So keep pursuing him. Keep taking this step because he's there with you. I love you all. See you tomorrow.